What's up everybody, it's Izzy, and in this video I'm going to talk about keeping your butt down on the bench. I'm doing my best to put out some more content here, and uh, one of the strategies that I'm using is instead of creating content, like putting out these huge 30 minute guide type videos, I'm going to do more documentation, so I'm going to be filming my training, talking about the issues that I'm dealing with in myself and my clients because I feel like that makes it a lot easier to always have something to say because it's based on what I'm actually dealing with at that time. So these kind of videos I'm going to be putting out on my Izzy Narvez channel because they're not like comprehensive guides. They're just, um, you know, my current thoughts on the topic, a snippet of what I think, if you will. And anyway, I got that idea from Gary Vaynerchuk. So if you got social media people out there, if you want some great ideas on how to grow your social media business, check out Gary Vaynerchuk. He's awesome. I know the rest of you do not give a fuck. So let's talk about keeping your ass down on the bench press. All right. So with any question like this, the first thing you got to ask is, uh, does this matter? Now, if your ass is coming like a foot up in the air when you bench, and uh, I think you should try to fix that, mostly because it says that you're not tight in your setup in general now if your ass is coming just a few inches off of the bench and you're not a competitive power lifter probably doesn't fucking matter besides you know if you just don't like the way it looks not a big deal in my opinion now for competitive power lifters obviously you your ass has to stay on the bench or your lift doesn't fucking count so in this video i want to talk about the most important things in my experience in dealing with this problem and how you can go about fixing it if it's an issue for you. So let's talk about competition benches. So one of the biggest reasons that I see that people will lift their ass off of the bench is they just use a shitty bench. They use one of these commercial gym benches that's like eight inches off of the ground because it's designed you know, to be able to work for everybody, including midgets apparently. So it's just a shitty, super low bench and you're, you're just too close to the ground, and so what ends up happening is there's just so much slack in your setup that your hips lift. So one of the most important factors, in my opinion, and really competition specificity for equipment in general, is to get a competition height bench. You can kind of get away without using a proper bar on deadlifts. Squats are squats for the most part, but uh, it's really gonna be difficult if you're trying to build a competition bench technique with a lot of arch, with good leg drive, if you're constantly just using shitty benches. So the first thing, if you can get access to a good competition bench, or just look up the specs on a competition bench and try to find which one in your gym matches it the, the, uh, the closest. Now beyond that, I think there's really two things that you can do that affect your ass coming up on the bench the most. And thing number one is how you set up. And thing number two is the direction of your leg drive. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is the direction of your leg drive. And I'm going to talk about that first because it lets me have my video playing in the background before I need to pull out some different pictures. So a lot of people when they drive with their legs literally drive straight down with all their might. And what that does is that's going to extend the hips. And if you have enough slack in your setup or really any, even a tiny amount of slack, when your ass is barely touching the bench, if you extend the hips, you flex the glutes, your ass comes off of the bench. So you don't want to push straight down with your leg drive because pushing straight down for the most part is going to extend your hips. With your leg drive, you want to be pushing forward. A cue that I really like is try to rip your toes out of the front of your shoe. But another way of thinking about it is that you simply want to be pressing in a direction that would push your head closer to your spotter or closer to where the hooks are. So if you notice what I'm doing right now in this video, I want to be pushing in a direction that would be backwards, right? I'm pushing along the ground instead of down into the ground. And that makes sure that my drive is really going into my traps and reinforcing my arch rather than driving straight down and extending my hips further. So another way that I've heard this described is that you want to think about flexing the quads but not flexing the glutes and that's another way of putting it i mean there's, these are all different ways of putting it right rip your toe out the front of your shoe um push along the floor not down on the floor push your head towards your spotter all of these things are talking about direction of leg drive and it makes a very big difference now 
you will actually slide along the bench if you're doing this properly with just the bar or light enough weights. But if you have enough weight on there to pin your shoulders down and you're chalking your back on the bench, you are not going to slide. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is your actual bench setup. All right, so as you can see in this picture, there's really two setups that I find that end up working well for people when it comes to a competition style powerlifting bench. On the right here is the kind of setup that you're going to see most commonly from most people. And that's the setup where you'd really try to keep your feet back and underneath you. One of the things that people always say about keeping your ass on the bench is that you want to try to have your knees below the level of your hips. And while that can help, I don't actually think it matters that much because if you're using leg drive and you flex at the hips and there's any slack, the hips will still come up even if your feet are all the way back. And that's actually true even if you're not competing in a federation that requires your feet to be flat. If you're getting any kind of leg drive and you're not just on the, on the very tips of your toes, if they're slack and you flex the hips, your ass can come off of the bench. But in any case, these are the two styles that I've seen work for people for two different reasons. And it all has to do with setting up your arch and whether you prefer a big arch or getting a lot of leg drive. And that's kind of outside the scope of this video. But if you want to watch a really good video on how to set up your bench press arch for um, a bench press competition that requires your feet to be flat, I'm going to put a link in the description box to a video that JP did that's really, really good. And if you guys don't know who JP Couch is, check out his channel, his Instagram. He uh, puts out a lot of great content for IPF lifters and just lifters in general, of course. So anyway, getting back to what I was talking about here, experiment with these two setups. The feet out in front of you setup tends to work really well because it encourages the proper leg drive direction. When your legs aren't beneath you, it's harder to get that grip on the floor where you're pushing down. When your legs are already out in front of you, it encourages that pushing back direction, which is what you want to keep your glutes on the bench. In my experience, this type of bench produces a really strong leg drive, and so it's great for those of you that need more pop off the chest and less overall arch. Kind of depends on how you bench. It's a, it's a style thing. Not everyone benches the same way. Now, on the right, again, this is the way that I see that most people bench, and it is, in my experience, better for setting up a big arch. The key with this type of setup is to make sure that you get as much slack out of it as possible. That means I see that a, I see a lot of people trying to emulate this setup and what they end up doing is a kind of a lackluster job of getting into position and you'll know if you're doing it right because it should be extremely uncomfortable. I actually did a video on how to increase your bench press arch or really it's just a video on my technique of setting up this particular arch and I'll link that in the description box as well so you guys can see what I'm talking about but you really need to get all the slack out of it you need to make sure that you're driving your shoulder blades as close to your ass as possible on the bench to really set up that arch and then don't just let your feet easily slide out straight fight your feet down so that there's less slack in the setup however the problem with setting up this way is that I find that it does encourage people to drive with their legs the wrong way. And the reason for that, and you can even kind of see it in the picture to some degree, is that when you have your legs really far behind you like that, and it's hard to get your heels touching on the ground, you end up turning your feet out. So your toe angle increases, right? And you're, uh, it's almost like you were setting up to do, you know, like a, a wide stance squat or a wide stance deadlift, and you have this wide foot angle. So the problem with your feet facing out like that is that it, it's hard to push forward from that position, right? It's more natural to push down from that position. So I see a lot of people who set up with the arch type style on the right who would benefit from just swinging their heels out a bit and actually putting um, themselves into you know a bit of internal rotation at the hip. And that can be a mobility issue for some people, but what it ends up doing is it allows you to get that push on the floor that's forward. You'll notice that if you go back and look at the bench footage that I included in this video, my feet, despite being pretty out pretty wide, are still pointed relatively forward so that I can drive in the proper direction forward and not drive down, which is really what causes the ass to lift up. So guys, I know this wasn't exactly the greatest visual presentation here. So let me go over again what I think are the keys. 
to keeping your ass out on the bench. Number one, get yourself a good bench. A super low bench is just hard to work with. It's hard to build any kind of technique around that. Get yourself a competition bench if you can. The second is your setup. Um, a lot of you guys could use a lot of work on your setup beyond just keeping your ass down. But try one of the two in this picture here. The left tends to work for people with a little bit of a narrower grip that use more pop off the chest and less of a huge arch. And the right works very well for people that tend to be towards the max grip width style with a lot of arch. Now, with either style, it's important to remember that you want to drive forward with your leg drive. Push the ground you know, away instead of push, no, not push the ground away, but don't, don't push down, but rather push along the ground so that you're driving yourself back and not down. And to me, guys, those are really the keys to keeping your ass out on the bench. It does take some practice, but if you play with it, you'll be able to create a setup on a competition bench that doesn't have enough slack for your ass to come up, but you're still getting good leg drive from that forward push. The one thing that I really don't like is when people basically just set up a big arch and then give up on getting any leg drive at all because their ass always comes up when they use leg drive. It's really key, in my opinion, if you want an elite bench to figure out how to both get a close to or a maximal arch while still preserving some leg drive because then you can really get the benefits of the arch because the leg drive gives you just a bit of pop off the chest to get the bar started and then you're basically doing a partial and that's how you can get a really sweet bench relative to your weight in a powerlifting competition anyways i hope you guys found the video useful i know i rambled on a bit here sorry about that but anyways if you like the video like the video and um if you're interested in getting coaching from me, you know, shoot me an email at izzy at powerliftingtowin.com or otherwise just look at the description box for details. As always, my friends, have a nice day. Good luck with your training and peace.